The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Monday. Today is the last day of the month. January has been good. But this morning, I want to send out quick congratulations to the Right Reverend Dr. Nikwe of the Anglican Church, your Suffragan Bishop. Congratulations to you. And I also want to say a very big congratulations to Magdan Aviation. Last Friday and Saturday was fantastic. I've seen a few letters flying around. And it's making me think and ask a, a simple question. Beyond all the uh, pull and push, the locking of horns, are we thinking about how many jobs are being created for the Ghanaian people? Are we thinking about the foreign direct investment? Are we thinking about the opportunity to have other planes being repaired or maintained here because the license says so? And I'm not saying these things because I flew on the private jet. We'll come to the airport shortly. So good morning to you, Mr. Yakwakwa. I've seen your letters. And I like the fact that you want systems to work. Before we discuss that, I would want to get back to your earlier conversation about the Christmas tree, Mr. Kwakwa, and the Ghana Airport Company. When the matter of the Christmas tree came up, whether it was sponsored partly or not, whether we got the Christmas tree with inspiration or whatever it is, we didn't see you write so many letters like you have written now. You have a PR department that went to sleep. It is good to hold people accountable and to come to order. But it is also good to support. Friday, I didn't see you. I didn't see your board chairman. I didn't see your top echelons. So the question I'm asking this morning is that where were you when we used our money to buy a Christmas tree? Why didn't you write a letter to explain and it was your board chairman who was writing letters up and down? By all means, hold people accountable. But have you held yourself self accountable? That's the first question I want to ask this morning. Have you held yourself self accountable? My second question is this. I was at the airport on um, Saturday. And then I saw some security guards there. No, I don't want the letter. Forget, forget about the letter. I don't want the letter. There are some security guards there who had stopped a vehicle and they had blocked the vehicle and said the man had to pay some money. And I saw on some pages, somebody took a screenshot and sent to me that, well, I'm the, the almighty holy Johnny Hughes uh, who says that laws must work is the one who is at the airport defending an offending driver and asking that the driver be left on the hook. When you lure people to commit crimes, you yourself, you're a criminal. Those attitude of security people and, and all manner of law enforcers who hide in the dark, because there's no, for example, you get to the Wudome area, the police hide in the dark under the tree. And then they lure the people to come in and they say, we have, we have caught you, I catch you, I catch you. You don't lure people to commit crime. In advanced country where they are civilized, they actually caution you and they tell you, no ma'am, you can't move here. No sir, you can't do that. They tell you, they conscientize you. You are busy asking people to come into Ghana for tourism. You are busy doing year of return beyond the return and whatever it is. You are busy telling us that tourism is the fourth uh, biggest earner. And then people come into your country for the first time. You are standing there. And I saw a crowd of security people matched up at one place. That's why I'm asking Mr. Ayakokwa this morning. Have you held yourself accountable? They are supposed to be advantage points, not to be sitting under some tree. But it is because we have uh, too many jobs for the boys. Ubiake Kenya found a security coordinator. Every just anybody. You see them at the chobas with their gota. They are fighting over uh, Yemwadie with, with ordinary citizens. They come to the chobas with their gota. They are fighting over Yemwadie with ordinary citizens. Me, I'll tell you. I'll tell you because I've seen people hold gota. We have seen security people before. This pentimaminto will not help us. So, Mr. Kwaka, my first question to you this morning is, are you thinking about the jobs that could be created? Are you thinking about the foreign direct investment? Are you thinking about the plane maintenance 
And I've seen letters. I don't want to go into the letters because it wastes my time. But I want the same energy like you are exerting. And by all means, hold people accountable. If Magdan is wrong, hold him accountable. But you must also be able to explain to us in writing, as you have done, how the Christmas tree saga happened. How we spent all that money buying Christmas tree when Napco people had not been paid. You must be able to explain to us. And I'll be on that matter because you have the PR department. You are managing director, Mr. Kwakwa. Good morning to you. And good morning to your appointment, Mr. President. That's my first issue. My second issue is that UTAG is still on strike. And we are all pretending as if nothing is happening. There's a convention. It's not, it's not starting. It's a convention. 21 days, the universities will shut down. It's happened in 1995 before it happened in year 2000, the Mobrawa demonstration, where the students said it's too expensive, the fees are too expensive, they can't pay. <coughs> we know. And we are all pretending as if, yeah, every, everything is fine. They are asking for better conditions of service. Oh. They are not asking for what Article 71 holders will get. They are asking for better conditions of service. We are not minding them because we think that we can use the National Labor Commission to force them into the classroom. So the minister comes to tell us, oh, we are committed to giving them better conditions of service. National Labor Commission says, uh, we, are, we have taken you to court. But the National Labor Commission is not asking the employer why you agreed with the employee and have refused to fulfill a part of the bargain. Motro Mojo. Motro Mojo. Motro Femo. Ungratefulness. That is where we are now. If my father was a lecturer, I would ask him to stop teaching and fly out. And can you imagine the kind of how hard we will be hit if all the lecturers, the doctors, the professors, they decide to fly out and go and look for jobs elsewhere? They are contemplating that. Who will be teaching our children? No civilization happens without the, the fruitful contribution of the academic society. Your creme de la creme, your academic society, they are begging for better bread. We should be ashamed of ourselves as a country. We should be ashamed of ourselves as a country. We should be very, very much ashamed of ourselves that our lecturers have gone on strike for all this while. We are just doing meetings and meetings and meetings, and there's no high-level powered conversation that's happening with them because the last time we did in July and August 2021, we sent the vice president to go and talk to them. He spoke to them, and nothing happened. So they don't trust you. They are trust issues, but they have family. January has ended. They will bring Ghana Water will bring their bills. ECG will bring their bills. Everybody will bring. They will pay. Where will they get the money to pay? And you are threatening them that you want to freeze their salaries. <laughs> you freeze their salaries. I see. So that is where we are now. People ask for better conditions of service and they are rather threatened. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, my third issue this morning is about Operation Clean Your Front. Henry Quante, good morning to you, Honorable Minister for the Greater Accra Region. Show me the video of the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. The Kwame Nkrumah Circle is special to me because it's central. This is the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. It covers what? Okanakwe South, Klote uh, Kole, and then uh, Ayawaso Central. Stop, 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 stop. So this morning, or tomorrow morning, Dr. Uh, Mr. Henry Quarty, he will lead the team to say we are asking people to clean their frontage. If you don't do, we'll take you to court. Mr. Regional Minister, this is also your frontage. Yesterday, I saw you in church with the vice president. The vice president said, praise the Lord. I said, hallelujah. I saw you. This is your frontage, Mr. Henry Quarty. This is the Kwame Nkrumah circle. I've been talking about this for a very, very long time, but you are turning a deaf ear to it. This is your frontage. This is your frontage. Bola, people sleeping under the bridge, everywhere is smelling, and you are going around saying you want to, you want to go to people's individual homes. to Clean your frontage. Charity begins at home. Tell him, tell Mr. Quarty, hashtag it, Johnny's bite. Tell him I said he should clean his frontage. I like him, I like what he's doing. I'm not attacking him. I'm talking about the issues. Clean your frontage. This is your frontage. Play the video. This is your frontage, Mr. Henry Quarty. I took this on a Sunday afternoon. 
After we finished the program at the cathedral, I went to take it myself. This is your Accra city. People are sleeping in the median. Kole is smelling. Odor is smelling. Clean your frontage. Now you have full complement of MMDCs who will help you in the coordinating council. Sir, clean your frontage. Please clean your frontage. Because if you start operation, clean your frontage. And you go holding people to account. And your own frontage is dirty. I will say it. Me, I'll say it. I'll tell you, Mr. Kwanikwati. Please clean your frontage. Because it must get to a point where the people who want to hold others to, to account must themselves hold themselves to account. So clean your frontage, Mr. Henry Kwati. And this is a passionate appeal to you. And this is also to uh, my MP Honorable Dakwa Newman and also to uh, uh, Zanetto Ajima Rollins and also to uh, Madam Elizabeth Saki and also to um, uh, 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 Mr. Jetawia. Clean your frontage. It will move you. It's too dirty. Clean your frontage. Because if you don't clean your frontage, you have no moral right. Stop. Pause. Every time we get to the baller, go back, back a bit and stop. Let them see the baller. Now show me the, the rubbish bin that we spent so much money to, uh, to install. And we said that, oh, these ones were going to help us fight the canker of, um, what do you call it? Um, show it. Put the projected up there. Let's see it. This one. We spent money to buy this. This one. We spent money to buy this. And we said that we're going to use it to help us to fight in sanitary conditions in the city. In the whole of Ghana. We said it. We spent so much money for this one. When was the last time you saw something like this? I remember that in the days of President Kufo, when we went for Hippic, there were some yellow rubbish bins like this, smaller than this, that were brought. They were installed all over the place. Hippic, I remember. Yellow. Where are they? Now we spent so much money to get this one. And then we don't even have a proper monetary system. Look at it. The baller is full. There's another one uh, uh, that's been put on the side. It's obvious that people now bring their baller from home to come and put in there. But every assembly has metro guards. The sad thing is that they go to work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday and Sunday, they go to sleep. So whether somebody blocks the road, they don't care. This morning, they will go to work after 8 p.m., 8 a.m., the few of, a few of them will go to town if there's an operation, as they call it, happening. Come back to the studio. A few of them will go to, to town if there's an operation happening. And then if there's not an operation, you see them sitting on a mango tree sometimes playing draft and ludo and, and or worry, all those things. No smart city sleeps. No smart city in this 21st century sleeps. So if you have 16 guards, you can, you can schedule them and say eight of you come for morning shift when you close, the other eight come for night shift. But then we allow them to be there. Then they close at, at 5 p.m. and they go. And then they come back the next morning to say the city is dirty. Who made it dirty? And we have been talking about this over and over and over again. It's not about launching the campaigns and say, clean your frontage. It's not about the launching of the campaign. Because if collectively we are all doing our part in small bits, the Metro Guards, there's a sanitation officer in every assembly. They have Metro Guards. We waited for nine months for the municipal and district chief executives to be appointed. And here we are. Our baller situation is not getting any better, but we have the full ministry for uh, sanitation and water resources. We set up a full ministry for it. Bless his soul, Mr. Kofiada. He was our first minister for sanitation. And then Madame Cecilia Adapa came to swap with him from aviation. And then they did that swapping for them. We still have a minister. We still have regional ministers. We still have MMDCs. Ghana will be the cleanest city in Africa by four years. Now we are in the fifth year. Nana Kufuado. We are still dirty and smelling. Every day we launch a new initiative, but we are still dirty and smelling. The citizens have a role to play 
but you in officialdom also have a role to play. And I'm saying that when you spend money to install these rubbish bins, as we see here, when you spend money to install them, we must also keep an eye on them because it's an investment. Because if we can't find them, is that what we call causing financial loss to the state? Is that what we call causing financial loss to the state? You have spent money, but the money is not impacting the people. We are just throwing money at Bola. We are just throwing money at Bola. That's what we're doing. And the whole, when you travel outside and you come back into Ghana, you breathe the air, you, you see the air smelling. You travel outside, we know, all of you travel outside. Some of you travel to go and get medical care. You travel, we know. When you breathe the air out, then you come back. Do you, do you not you see the difference? Like a mom in Jefu. But we all, we sit and watch as if nothing is happening. We sit down and watch. How is it that people live in communities? They live within assemblies. And then they decide that, as for me, I will not be connected to a waste management company, even though the assembly has delegated or mandated one to be within my, 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 my circuit. How? How? That people have homes, they have no toilets, and then, sorry if you're having your breakfast, they pull in plastic bags and they put it in the bowl and people come and carry. How? Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana. When Kwame Nkrumah was setting up the Ghana Water and Sewage Company, was that what he intended? That people should be pulling rap, 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 polythene bags and throwing it in Bola? Was that what he was intending? Or what, was that what he intended? But here we are. Here we are. And we have become so dirty. When you want to invite somebody over, you are looking over your shoulders. So when we get visitors, we take them to the plush places. We don't take them to the Zongos. But when we want the votes, we go to the Zongos. And we tell the Zongos we want to make their lives better. Have we made their lives better? The people of Nima are still waiting for their East Legon infrastructure, as was promised to them. Good morning to you, Dr. Mustafa Hamid. Good morning to you, Alaji Boniface Sadiq. We need to be serious in this country. If we cannot fulfill, don't promise. Today I'm on Bola. We'll stay on Bola because the whole country is dirty. Where are the sanitation marshals as we were promised? We told that we'll have sanitation marshals. We did a whole Bola program at the uh, banquet hall of the state house, which I find um, quite illogical if you ask me. You are talking about Bola. You are not going to where the Bola is. You are sitting in an air-conditioned banquet hall to organize a Bola conference. The people you are talking to who have to go and clear the Bola, they will not see the Bola. They won't see the Bola. They won't see the rubbish. They won't see the filth. They won't see the dirt. We launched that. We said we we're going to have uh, sanitation, uh, what do you call it, uh, marshals. Then we said we're even going to borrow money, about 200 million or so, to come and clean Bola. Elsewhere, Bola is money. In our place, Bola has become a canker. It's on our head. I say, these, these beings, these ones that we installed, we made a whole fuss about it. Where are the beings? That's the question I'm asking. Sanitation minister, good morning. MCU, good morning. Assemblyman, good morning. Where are the beings? These ones that we installed with our monies. Do you see them in town? They had covers. We even had padlock over them, correct? They were, you cover them with a padlock. Where are the padlocks? Where, where are the covers? That is what I'm talking about. Maintenance culture. It's not about launching operation, this operation, that. When you launch, you have to sustain. It's basic in project management. Then finally, let's talk about the, the little doctors and the, and the fake pastors and the juju men who appear on our TV. NCA is sitting and watching them. NMC is sitting and watching them. IGP is sitting and watching them. National Security is sitting and watching them. And they tell you that Bank of Ghana, they are sitting and watching them. And they tell you that, oh, bring X amount of money, we'll double it for you. And they charm cash on, on TV and the money comes. 
Are you Bank of Ghana? Are you Bank of Ghana? You manufacture. I saw this on TV. And I took a lot of program. It's, it's, and, 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 and you see plenty of them. They are charming cash. They are charming cash. Sika Gari, Sika this, Sika that. All manner of hogwash. They are not encouraging people to do hard work. Come back to the studio. They are not encouraging people to do hard work. And we are watching. IGP, good morning to you. I thought that when you came, all of those things would stop. Because when you gave a warning to the prophets about the move, yeah, they kept quiet. I want you to issue another warning, IGP. Good morning, your own boy, sir. Those who say we will double your money for you, if you give me 100 CDs, I'll give you 1,000. If you give me 1,000, I'll give you 10,000. If you give me 2,000, I'll give you 20,000. I want you to pick them up. They are criminals. Those juju men on TV and on Facebook and all of that who are harassing people, they should be picked up. We must sanitize our airwaves. And this is why I want the National Media Commission and the National Communication Authority. How did they even get their licenses to be broadcasting in the first place? How? Juju man on TV. Fake pastor on TV. And you see, the, when it started, we all kept quiet. Now we have people who tell others that take off my shoe, you see your passport in it, and then they'll go and queue a passport office to be doing their own passport. They tell people that, oh, uh, me, I, I, I can fly in your dreams and I'll be in the next country. And then the next moment, you see the one, the Canadian embassy trying to fight for visa. All those scammers must be brought to book, Mr. IGP. They must all be brought to book. Money doublers, loto, whatever it is, the fake ones that are on TV, people who are doing juju, all of those ones. And there are too many of them. There's uh, Goat TV, there's Sheep TV, there's Onufu TV, there's Wa TV, everything TV. Why? Why? Why is it that we don't encourage people to do hard work? So Mr. IGP, I hold your left leg, sir. I'm holding the left one because if you have to move first, you advance with your left leg first. As a uniform, so I'm holding the left leg until you give assurance that you will pick them up. We are holding your left leg, sir. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, it is your job to be cutting currency, to be issuing those notes. It is not the job of any juju man or any pastor or whatever it is. If you see people on TV doing that, pick them up. National Communications Authority, you have to be explaining to us how it happened, Mr. Anoche, that people have licenses to be broadcasting such things on our TV. And this is where I ask the National Media Commission, if you do any monitoring at all, or you pick and choose, you are picking Johnny Hughes, you are picking Captain Smart, you are picking Parkway System C. Do you do monitoring beyond the big stations, the Joy FMs, the TV3s, the 3 FMs, the Doom TVs, the UTVs, the GBCs? Do you do any monitoring beyond them? Do you even have the capacity to do the monitoring? There are a lot of NAPCO people who are walking around who are jobless. National service people. Engage them and pay them by commission. Let them do the work, find people, find them, pay them commission out of those ones. There are too many things that the young people of this country can help you to achieve, but they are just there. They are just there, we are watching, everybody is watching and see if nothing is happening. I'm not happy at all this morning because I don't believe that in Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana, we should have these things happening. There's Bola everywhere, we invest money into Bola management. We don't see the money. We don't see the, the things that we, uh, we bought with our money. We, we have juju men on TV, uh, fake pastors on TV. Everybody is watching as if the country is on autopilot. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. And this is my short story for this morning. I don't get it. If you get it and you keep quiet and you don't speak about it, you are part of our problem. This morning, I want you to hashtag it, tweet it, and send a clear message out there. If you grew up in a home, you won't support some of those things. And I want to see us go back to the National Sanitation Day and keep it holy. It's not about launching big, big things. I told my uncle, I record you already. It's not about launching big, big things, Operation Clean This, Operation Do That. A lady told me in Tamale the other time how, uh, for example, uh, they, her house... 
has a gutter that has been constructed but it's not completed. And then each time the water flows, it brings the baller, comes to land in front of their home. They have to spend money to pick it and clear it. So that if they don't have money to clear it, then we'll go and say, Operation, clean your frontage. Macho, we have arrested you. Is it their fault? We have not conscientized the people. So first February is coming. That boy I thing. I want to see what's happening. Then he opened a folder for me, last one. So we spoke about the war traffic lights uh, the other time. And we're getting some plaudits. Danny, did you get it? The, the Walid uh, sent us something that suggests that we did something right. We spoke about the, tra the traffic lights in WA, and they have fixed them. And so we are happy about that. The street lights, they say they beg, should be fixed. I'm sure we can talk about that. But that's all this morning for Johnny's Bite. Thank you very, very much indeed for your time. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Have a nice day. Good morning.